Well, David Morgan with you here. I'm at 111 Pender Street in Vancouver on the 35th floor, and I have to say it's a, quite a view up here. Today I have David Wolfen and Jasmine Yee from Avino Silver, and we're going to talk about Avino. We've done a few interviews in the past. Avino is some as a silver company I've known about for years and years because being the silver buff that I am, I uh, learned about Avino through Paul Sarnoff. We won't go down that road again. We've done it before, but... Let's, uh, you're producing now, let's talk about what your production rate is right now and what you look for in future production with uh, Vino Silver. Well, currently we're uh, in development phase on one uh, vein structure on a Vino called the San Gonzalo Zone. And uh, within the next few months, we'll be uh, able to feed the mill at the full capacity of 250 tons per day. Um, on an annual milling basis, that could represent about 1.1 million silver equivalent ounces. Okay. So let's talk about somebody in the peer group that's at or was at that level. Can you give us a name or two that might? Yeah, be? well, I look at Great Panther uh, endeavors a little bit further ahead, but Great Panther, you know, they did 2.2 million silver equivalent ounces in uh, 2010, and we're on pace to do half that uh, uh, coming up. So. so could you increase your mill capacity to get to that 2 million uh, on an Absolutely. Okay. We've hired Warge Up Engineering, and they're doing a study on... Uh, on uh, whether we can expand the current production from San Gonzalo. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking at uh, revamping the old mine that's sitting flooded, and that's where we stopped mining be in 2001, and we were doing 1,000 tons per day there. So we're doing a study on that, and we've got a tailings pond with about 10 million ounces of silver and about 80,000 ounces of gold. Wardrop's con conducting a scoping study on that to see how we can reprocess it using modern technology. Well, Jasmine, let me turn to you for a moment since you're a mining engineer and it's kind of your job to look at the economics of these things. Like you all just go out and find it and get all the drilling done and then, you know, nothing works until you're making money doing it. Uh, how do you see this project going forward? What kind of expansion do you see uh, the possibilities being? Uh, from San Gonzalo, basically what we're looking at is we'll be developing the mine. We'll be looking at uh, producing... Uh, at least three producing stopes in order to maintain the 250 ton per day production that we had called for. And basically we'll, we'll be having wardrobe on board to help us out with regards to the optimization and how we could improve the economics based on the results we've got from the bulk sample. Uh, basically there are some uh, areas that we could improve on and basically uh, we'll be looking at uh, wardrobe for, for some guidance as to how we could approach this. Very good. They did a feasibility study on uh, Lexco's United Kino Hill operation, and I think they're at 400 tons per day, and they said there is potential that we could increase uh, San Gonzalo mining up to that rate. So they're going to do a study on that. Okay. And what kind of uh, exploration potential have you got in the company or the oh, projects down the road? Uh, uh, there is so much because our partners in the past never explored uh, at any depth and we've we did a lot of IP geophysics 80 kilometers um, we've been modernizing the raw data um, and digitizing it and we've identified lots of anomalies at depth we've been drilling them we've completed uh, about 45 holes this year about 5,000 meters and we've identified two new zones that we're uh, we're going to target for um, tonnage expansion very good yeah. What would you say about uh, the potential? I just asked David, do you see, I mean, you're excited about this project longer term. you see this as something going on for decades or? Yes. Basically, we could see uh, a lot of potential out of Avino. We, we're looking at the, uh, uh, e, the old ET mine, basically trying to get that back on board with current uh, copper prices and silver and gold prices. It looks really good. The other big project that we're also looking at would, would be the study that Wardrobe is currently updating, and that would be the tailings uh, uh, study that they, they're going to update based on the previous study they did in 2006. These are the two big uh, projects that we see coming online, and uh, we're basically going through the permitting stages for, for some of these projects. We're looking at upgrading the uh, infrastructure we had at, at, at San Gonzalo, we're looking at trying to get <coughs> cheaper power to run the operation, to run the mining operation rather than use diesel generators. So basically, there is the power line that we're looking at uh, bringing, and we're also uh, looking at <coughs> replacing some of the contractor's equipment, which uh, basically 
they are um, <coughs> they cause a lot of uh, downtime availability really isn't as good as what we would like so we've basically gone ahead and purchased some ad additional equipment that would help the contractor out in improving yeah. their productivity yeah, and new, newer and larger equipment great <coughs> I want to visit the tailing pond situation a little bit. Uh, it's my understanding that uh, in some areas you've got basically enough uh, mineralization within the tailing pond to make it economic to extract that mineralization out. Where do you, what, what's the full story on the tailing ponds with Avino right now? With the tailings, there, 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 there are two types of tailings. There's the oxide tailings, which uh, Wardrobe did the study on. The sulfide tailings, there's uh, about 3 million tons of sulfide tailings. It's low grade material, basically needs a little more work, uh, but at current metal prices, it might be a viable project on, on its own, but that's uh, something that we will probably have to look at as well. In total, there's uh, a little over 5 million uh, tons of tailings, and basically there's 3 million tons of sulfide tailings and 2 million tons of oxide tailings. The oxide tailings, uh, as far as we're, we're aware of, based on the 2006 study and the work that has been done, basically suggests that uh, a heap leach operation would be viable. We're also looking at new technologies such, such as the continuous vat leach. There, there's been some work done, preliminary work done on this, and uh, one of the issues that, uh, uh, that we're trying to address is the fact that there's a lot of fines in, in the tailings that may hinder the continuous vat leach system, but that's something that probably needs to be worked out. Okay, so it'd be safe for me to say that it's uh, maybe a bonus, but it's not something that you know should take a lot of you know, time and energy. I understand the study being done, et cetera, but it's, it's just a nice to have kind of a situation. Is that a fair assessment? It's a good asset, and, and with uh, new technologies like heap leaching, we can go after the oxide tailings. And the 2006 study that they did uh, um, uh, was positive, but our focus changed at that time towards San Gonzalo. Now we're going back to it. Um, if you were to look at the long-term objectives of the company, it's to be a multi-million ounce a year producer. Mm -hmm. San Gonzalo can do a million plus ounces. The ET can do that, and uh, the uh, tailings. So we'd be up competing with Endeavor Silver in the next three to five years. So that's our goal. Okay, great. Well, thanks for the clarification. <laughs> I didn't want. I just want to get <laughs> at the right level because, yeah. you know, I'm conservative, as you well know, and I like to uh, under promise and over yeah. over deliver. So, very good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the stock side of things. Let's talk a little bit about the finances, uh, what you've got in the treasury, what's your burn rate. Uh, are you very comfortable going forward with this development uh, program you've outlined? Yeah, we have about $8 million cash in the bank with no debt. We currently have about uh, uh, 380 tons of um, concentrate left over uh, from the San Gonzalo from the current level. We have another 200 tons of concentrate because we've been mining above ground stockpiles. So we're marketing that for sale right now, which is going to bring in several million dollars. Uh, the burn rate, um, Jasmine can touch upon. Yeah, the burn rate typically ranges anywhere from 200, uh, 250 to maybe about 400,000 a month. Okay, great. So we're, we're sitting in a pretty good position. Um, our largest shareholder, Sprott Asset Management, they're, they have um, uh, quite a few warrants in the money, and they've said that any time we'd like some cash, just let them know and they'll write us a check for the warrants. So. Very good. So where have you done most of your baseline uh, silver price-wise? How conservative have you been on your you know, projections going forward? And we're sitting today talking silver's back around $40 an ounce, which is a you know, very profitable company, but you know, silver does move around. So mm -hmm. what's your kind of baseline? Uh, we um, uh, were forecasting that we'd produce silver around $10 an ounce from San Gonzalo, but uh, a few uh, weeks ago we reported the results of the bulk sampling and it was under eight dollars for um, silver equivalent. I think it was seven. Uh, seven eighty. Seven eighty. Okay. Very good. Yeah. A lot of margin. So. Yeah. Great. Well, David, it'd be a little remiss without a little bit of history. So, why don't you give us the background of your father? Okay. Uh, he he's been in the industry for over uh, fifty years. He started in the brokerage uh, in the Toronto Stock Exchange in the fifties. He uh, worked his way up to the trading desk and they uh, sent him to Vancouver in the 60s. He funded a small company called Pyramid Mines 
um, at 25 cents a share. Within six months, it was trading at $25. It was the uh, Pine Point Molybdenum Discovery, which they ended up selling to Kamenko that year for about 25 bucks a share. It helped uh, put the Vancouver Stock Exchange on the map for mining. All right, well, I've covered pretty much what we wanted to. I mean, Avino is a story that you know our members are familiar with. But before we close out, I'd just like to address the, my softball question, and that is, is there anything that you would like to talk about for our viewers before we close out uh, this update on Avino? Just like to let everyone know the progress we've made on upgrading our listing. Um, we've been recently approved to get the listing on the New York Amex Exchange. We're just waiting for a date to be called to trade. So that's going to be sometime this summer. Great. Well, congratulations yeah. on you. that. Thank that's, you. Thank you. That's great. Yes. Yeah.